Hi, I'm Brandon Neely from the Civil War Institute, and today I want to tell you about what a wounded commanding officer experienced after his wounding at the Battle of Gettysburg. Today I'm standing on Barlow's Knoll, a raised hill on the north side of Gettysburg, and the site of significant fighting on the first day of the battle. Behind me is a statue of Francis Channing Barlow, the Union commander who was beaten here and who the hill is named after. It's his experience I'd like to talk about briefly. Barlow was a fascinating figure who arrived at Gettysburg with plenty of baggage. Commanding a division with large numbers of immigrant fighters, Barlow was not shy about his belief that they couldn't fight as well as other soldiers. Calling them miserable beasts, Barlow almost certainly damaged his commanding relationship with his men because of this anti-immigrant bias. His situation would get even worse when he was rushed to the north end of town on July 1st, hoping to stem the tide of advancing Confederate forces. Though he initially took up a line with Major General Carl Scherz's forces in the fields closer to town, he spotted this hill and believed it to be a better firing position. When he moved forward to take it, however, he created a gap between his line and Scherz's line, which military historians have debated for over a century and a half. Whether it was rash and dangerous or opportunistic, it failed. Barlow's forces were pummeled and his men were forced to retreat. Barlow himself, though, would not make it back on July 1st. As he wrote in a letter after the battle, he was trying to lead his troops, but the enemy's skirmishers had hardly attacked us before my men began to run. No fight at all was made. Before he could rally the soldiers he felt certain were weak and cowardly, he was shot in the side. Though a few soldiers tried to carry him back, they were shot and killed as well. Laying on the ground, Barlow was under direct fire, writing, I did not expect to get out alive. A ball went through my hat as I lay on the ground, and another just grazed the forefinger of my right hand. Finally, the enemy came up and were very kind. Barlow, wounded, was captured and cared for by Confederate soldiers. This moment was immortalized by Confederate Brigadier General John Gordon, who famously wrote that he had encountered the wounded Barlow on the battlefield, had spoken with them, and then had gone on to fight, thinking Barlow had died. Years after the war ended, at a Washington dinner, Gordon was introduced to a General Barlow. Gordon remembered it like this. I asked Barlow, General, are you related to the Barlow who was killed at Gettysburg? He replied, why, I am the man, sir. Are you related to the Gordon who killed me? I am the man, sir, I responded. Gordon would go on to use this story as an example of sectional reconciliation, writing that the friendship between us which was born amidst the thunders of Gettysburg was greatly cherished by both. This story, however, is almost certainly apocryphal, designed to foster feelings of unification in the post-war period, The Gordon may have encountered Barlow here on the Knoll. Barlow's account makes no such mention of a battlefield meeting and does not confirm many of the details present in Gordon's account. Instead, Barlow was given morphine by Confederate surgeons to ease the pain and was brought to the home of John Crawford, which still stands here in Gettysburg right next to Gettysburg College. It was there that Barlow would wait out the raging battle. As soldiers fought fiercely for Little Round Top and rushed forward in Pickett's charge, Barlow remembered, I found some books there and passed Thursday and Friday very comfortably under morphine. I read and talked a good deal. Rather than commanding his immigrant soldiers, Barlow spent the Battle of Gettysburg enjoying the presence of Confederate ones, writing that they are more heroic, more modest, and more in earnest than we are. Their whole tone is much finer than ours. Except among those on our side who are fighting this war upon anti-slavery grounds, there is not much earnestness, nor are there many noble feelings and sentiments involved. When the Confederates were ultimately defeated on July 3rd, they left Barlow behind in the retreat, allowing him to return to the Union Army and be transported away for treatment of his terrible wound. Barlow's experience here at Gettysburg is a really interesting one which deserves more time than I can give here. Those interested in military history can study his actions here at Barlow's Knoll and debate their effectiveness. Those interested in social history can discuss his complicated views on immigration and slavery and how that reflected cultural discourses of the time. Those interested in medical history can consider his treatment here. And those interested in the history of Civil War memory can analyze the reasons Gordon's story came to be. But because I can't talk about all those things here, I'm going to offer you an invite to meet an expert who can. This June, at the Civil War Institute Summer Conference, esteemed historian Dr. Joan Waugh of UCLA will be here in Gettysburg to discuss Francis Channing Barlow's experiences of the Civil War. Her fascinating presentation will dig into the themes and histories I've only gotten to hint at in this video, and she'll be doing it here in Gettysburg, the site of his wounding. This is a perfect opportunity to come face-to-face -face with history and to understand better than anywhere else how it played out. 
For more information on the Summer Conference and Dr. Waugh's presentation, click the link in our description below or on our Facebook page. I'm Brandon Neely with the Civil War Institute, and I can't wait to see you here this summer.